Hey hi there, this is going to be very important video of C++ codes. In this video, we are going to see how the program actually executes on our machine whenever we write dot slash a dot exe command. So that's why this is going to be very very informative video. So even if you have basic idea about how the program executes, till I will recommend that please watch this video completely, do not skip it at all you will get all the informative stuff in this video. So let's start this video. So on my screen you can see I have drawn a basic computer system. Now it may not look so good but you can see some different parts of our computer systems are present on my screen. So you can see on the left we have hard disk drive. We can also call it as a secondary storage. Then we have random access memory. This is the random access memory. We can call it as a primary storage or it is a primary storage. Then we have processor or which is central processing unit. And then we have some input devices and we have some output devices. So basically the computer system comprises of these things. Primary memory, then secondary memory, then your central processing unit and then some input devices and some output devices. So this all things makes up your computer system. Now, whenever you write your code, let's say you write your code in the file that is, let's say test.cpp, okay? So whenever you write your code, you write your code in high level language that is C++. But our computer or our processor who is actually responsible for executing our code doesn't understand the C++ language or it doesn't understand any high level language. So that's why what you need to do, you need to convert that code into machine understandable language and that's why we have compiler. So what is the role of compiler? Compiler will basically convert your code, convert your high level code into low level code or machine level code or binary code. Okay. So that's why whenever you write G++ followed by your file name .cpp. So in our case, if you write G++ test .cpp, then this G++ which is C++ compiler, what it will do? This G++ will convert your test.cpp file into the executable file or into the binary file and usually we get our binary file with name a.exe. Okay. So you can see whenever you will compile your code, you will get a binary file, executable file which is a.exe and we call this file or this a.exe file is going to be our actual binary code. And this is machine understandable or machine readable. Okay. So now we have got this a.exe which is machine understandable or machine readable. Now what we have to do, we have to execute this code. We want that the machine should now start executing our code. So that's why we write this command that is dot slash a.exe. Okay, on Linux we write dot slash a dot out. Okay, so whenever you write this command dot slash a dot exe or dot slash a dot out, what happens? What actually happens? That's the important thing that we have to discuss. So whenever you write dot slash a dot out, you give instruction to your operating system that you want to start executing this file or you want to start executing this program. Okay, whenever you double click on some uh, executable let's say for opening google chrome what you do you double click on the chrome icon okay so it is very similar to writing dot slash a dot exe whenever you double click on uh, google chrome that means you are asking operating system to open this application or to run this application similarly whenever you write dot slash a dot exe you are asking your operating system to start execution of this code now operating system is responsible for all the further actions because operating system acts like a manager of your computer system or your machine. So operating system will be responsible for executing your code. Okay. So what operating system will do? Operating system will first take your code that is a.exe from the secondary storage to the primary storage. So this is the first step that the operating system is going to do. The operating system will take your code from the secondary storage to primary storage. 
Now, the primary storage that is random access memory is actually a shared storage. It is shared between all the programs. Many programs run simultaneously. So you can see your operating system itself is a program. So it's run on your primary storage. Let's say you have Google Chrome open. So the Google Chrome is also running on your primary storage. Let's say you have Visual Studio code open. So it is also an application. So it is also consuming some memory on your primary storage. So this primary storage is shared by all the running programs. Okay. And the running programs are called as processes. So this primary storage is shared by all the processes and it is operating systems responsibility to manage the primary storage. So operating system will be responsible for managing your primary storage and operating system will decide where actually in the primary storage you will get memory for your code. Okay. So it's operating systems responsibility to assign some memory for your program in the primary storage and it's operating systems responsibility to handle primary storage properly because it is a shared storage and multiple programs are going to use it simultaneously. So it's operating systems responsibility. So your operating system will take your code from the secondary storage. It will allocate you some memory on the primary storage. So let's say this is the space that the operating systems allocate for your code. Let's say this area is allocated to your code by operating system. So it is operating system responsibility to transfer this executable file into this memory on the primary storage. So your code that is a.exe will come over here. Okay. So once your code is on the primary storage, then it is again operating systems responsibility to schedule a CPU time for your executable or for your process. See on your machine or on your primary storage, there are multiple processes or multiple processes have got memory or multiple processes are running simultaneously, but we have only one CPU. There is only one CPU. So what, what is going to happen as there are multiple programs on the machine or as there are multiple programs open, we need CPU time for each and every program. Okay. So this is actually an advanced concept from the operating system, but right now just think it like this. You have multiple programs. Let's say you have five programs, which you, which you want to run simultaneously. So for example, you have Google Chrome, you have Visual Studio code, and there are few more codes and you have your a.exe code, right? So you have five processes running simultaneously, but there is only one CPU. So only one CPU is responsible for executing the instruction of all the five processes. So how this happens? The operating system actually schedules time for each and every process. So let's say it schedules 10 seconds of time for the first process. So first process will go to CPU. It will execute its instruction for the 10 second and it will come back. Then the second process will go. It will execute its instruction. So in this way, the operating system will schedule small, small chunk of time for each, each and every process. And in this way, each and every process will get some time, some execution time on the CPU. And in this way, the CPU will execute multiple processes simultaneously. All right. So let's not go in much details because it is an operating system concept. Okay. So right now we, we, we just have got this idea that it is operating systems responsibility to schedule CPU time for your machine or not for your machine for your process. So operating system will schedule CPU time for your process and then CPU will execute your instructions. It will take help of input output devices and in this way your code will get executed. Whenever you write scene then in that case the CPU will take help of input devices for taking input. Whenever you write C out in that case, CPU will instruct output devices to show this or to display output on the output devices, right? So in this way, your program executes. This is the simple uh, explanation of how your program executes in the computer system. Now, the next important thing that I want to discuss with you is how exactly this memory is organized on the primary storage. As we are discussing that we get memory on the primary storage. But the next important thing is how this memory is organized, how we get this memory, okay, how it is organized. So let's discuss about that, how this memory is organized. We have a program, we have, let's say, let, let's take this example. Let's say we have this program. 
so you can see in this program i have declared few things or there are multiple things so at first i am including the header files then you can see there is a global variable now i know that we haven't discussed about the global variable yet but if you have an idea about global variable then that's fine otherwise you can completely skip the global variable concept because we are going to have a separate module that is scoping of the variables and in that module we are going to discuss about global variables static variables so right now just for the explanation i have added these things but even if you don't know what is global variable and obviously if you are a beginner in c++ then i am also not expecting that you might be having an idea about the global variables so just keep it okay just don't focus on that part so i have a global variable then i am declaring few functions i am defining few functions so i have a function called as bar in that bar function i am creating a static variable again we don't know what is static variable but right now i'm just adding a static variable because i want to show you few things uh, regarding that but we are going to have a separate discussion or separate video on static variables so don't worry about that then i have few instruction like see out then i have another function that is foo then in this foo function i have a variable that is int foo var now whenever you declare any variable inside the function then that variable is called as local variable okay local variable of that particular function again we are going to discuss much more detail about local variable in the upcoming module that is scoping of the variable so don't worry about that and then we have a main function in main function we have one more variable that is main var and it is again a local variable of main function now from this main function we are calling foo function and from this foo function we are calling bar function okay so in our code we have multiple variables we have multiple functions so just out of curiosity we have to see how exactly the operating system will allocate memory to our program where exactly these variables will get stored on the memory that we get okay is there any rule or like operating system will store our data randomly like uh, a, some variable is lying there then some variable is lying here so how exactly it happens it's very interesting right so let's get started let me just show you how exactly this space is organized in the primary storage okay so let's go to that part cool so this is how your executable file looks on the primary memory while executing okay so whenever your program is executing i i recently told you that whenever the program executes or the executing program is called as process so your process will get memory in this form okay so your entire memory will be distributed in multiple sections so let's quickly discuss name of the section that the operating system creates so the first section is called as text section the second section is called as data section then we have row data section then we have stack section and then we have heap section okay so we have text then we have data row data stack and heap see actually in modern operating system there are many other things but right now we are just discussing about few important things okay so i'm not discussing about all the sections that operating system creates because then it is going to be a little bit complex so we are just looking at it from like abstract point of view or high level point of view okay so at a high level you have these sections text data ro data stack and heap these five sections now let's quickly see what gets stored in which section okay so in the text section your program instructions get stored okay now what are the program instruction whenever we write our code in c++ and when we compile it the code gets converted to binary now whatever logic we write in our code like if statement or see out statement or for statement whatever logic or whatever statements in we write in our code those statements will get converted into instructions now instruction is nothing but a instruction that will be executed by the cpu so instruction is kind of statement only but it is just a binary thing okay so your instructions will get memory in this text section so whatever your program whatever your program is and whatever instructions you have in your program or whatever logic you have in your program whatever code you have written in your program that will get stored in the text section so in this section your code will get stored okay your basic code 
will get stored obviously in the binary format okay now you have next section that is data section what gets stored in the data section in the data section the global and static variables get stored okay your global and static variables get stored in the data section now again we have no idea what global and static variables are but we are going to have separate discussion on that but right now just remember the data section is responsible for storing global and static variables then we have next section that is ro data section now this ro data section is responsible for storing read only data okay so there can be some scenarios where we have or we deal with read only data in our program let's say in case of strings we have string constants or string literals and these string literals are nothing but a read only data and they needs to be stored somewhere in the memory and those kind of things or those constants or literals gets memory on the ro data section then we have stack section or we have stack memory now this stack is responsible for function calling or for dealing with functions okay so i'm going to have a separate discussion on this stack so right now just don't worry about this stack section because we are going to have a separate discussion on this stack okay we are going to see it separately and then you have heap section now this heap section is responsible for dynamic memory okay now again we haven't discussed about dynamic memory what is dynamic memory but just to give you a short idea about dynamic memory whenever we execute our program sometimes this may happen that at the run time we need some space okay so generally what we do we create variable for storing something we create variable uh, for storing some data now variables are static memory because we need to declare variable and this declaration will will happen at compile time only okay so whenever you write your code at that time only you declare your variables so at that time only compiler is aware of how much memory these variables are going to need so such type of space is called as static space where your compiler already knows how much space you need because whenever you declare integer variable compiler knows that integer variable needs four bytes of size so this is static memory but sometimes you need some extra space while running your code or while executing your code so such type of space is called as dynamic memory and this dynamic memory is uh, stored or this is uh, allocated in this section that is heap section again we are going to have separate module on dynamic memory okay so don't again worry about what is dynamic memory and i'm not aware about it because we haven't actually learned that thing all right so i hope you are very clear with these things how the entire executable file or entire memory for the executable file is distributed and different different section so we have five sections first one is text section text section is responsible for storing your program's instruction what are the instruction instruction are nothing but some statements which are converted to binary and these instruction will directly go to cpu and cpu will be responsible for executing these instructions okay then you have data section data section is responsible for storing your global and static variable so your global and static variable will get memory in the data section then you have ro data section so in ro data section read only data will get stored then you have stack section stack section will be responsible for handling or for dealing with functions okay and the functions local variable will get memory on that stack section so we are going to discuss about that after like few minutes right and then we have heap section heap section is responsible for dealing with dynamic memory okay now let's quickly let me quickly open this code okay so you can see on the right i have opened this code now let's quickly see in my code or in this code we have one global variable that is global so where this global will get memory it's quite easy this global will get memory over here right because it is a global variable and that's why as it is a global variable the global variable will get memory where it will get memory in the data section again this bar var this bar var is a static variable right 
so where this bar var will get memory this bar var will get memory again in the data section okay so your global and static variables will get memory in the data section right so i hope this point is clear to you now where this foo var will get memory this foo var is not a global variable it's not a static variable okay it's a normal local variable of a function so a normal local variable of a function will get memory on the stack section and now we will just start dis discussing about what is a stack section and how these local variables gets memory on the stack section so let's zoom in zoom in this stack section and let's see how exactly this stack section works now our program can have multiple functions just listen it very carefully our program can have multiple functions but each and every program should have one function or at least one function and that is called as main function main function is very important function it is also called as entry point function okay so every program will start its execution from main function always remember every program will start its execution from main function whenever you write your code the execution will not start from like line one number one two three four it not it will not happen like this the execution is not from top to bottom the execution always starts from the main function and whatever main function has in its body execution will proceed accordingly so the main function is responsible for deciding how exactly the program execution will happen okay so let's see in this case how the execution will work initially the main function will get executed then in this main function we are creating one variable then we are printing a c or we have a c out statement so this c out will work and then it will print hello to main on the screen then we are calling foo function so now this foo function will get called now once this foo function will get called this foo body will start executing now in this foo we have bar function so this bar is not actually called by main but it is indirectly called by main because main actually called foo function and foo internally called bar function so this bar was actually indirectly called by main function and that's why i'm saying this main function is very important because whatever you write in your main function accordingly the program will execute let's say you don't write foo or you don't call foo from main function then what will happen then this foo and bar will not get called they will not be of any use because foo is not getting triggered or bar is not getting triggered that's why the main function is very important now how the local variables of your functions get storage or how your functions get storage on your stack section so let's start discussing on that now the first function that is going to be called is going to be your main function whenever any function is getting called or whenever any function gets called the function gets memory or function gets a frame on your stack section and that memory or that frame that your function gets is called as stack frame for your function okay so i'm again repeating whenever any function gets called the function gets memory on the stack storage or in on the stack section and the storage gets allocated in the form of stack frame okay so let's see how it happens so initially the main function will get called so initially the main function will get stack frame on the stack so this is nothing but stack frame of my main function so let me write this is first that this is stack frame of main now whatever variables you have in your main function will get memory on stack frame of your main function okay so in this case we have main variable or main var so this is the local variable of your main function so this will get memory on stack frame of your main and this is getting initialized to 40 okay so your local variables of the function where they are getting memory they are getting memory on the stack are they getting memory directly on the stack no they are getting memory on the stack but inside the stack frame of your function okay 
Now what is happening? Then we are printing hello to main. So this will get printed. Then the foo function is getting called. So we are again calling another function. So now what will happen? Foo function will get stack frame or will get memory in your stack storage. So the another stack frame will get added on top of main function and that is going to be stack frame of the newly called function that is foo function. Now have we completed execution of the main function? No, it's not completed because the execution of main function will complete when this foo function will get complete. Okay, so whenever this foo function will get complete at that time only the execution of main function will get complete because this foo function is called from the body of main function. So it's main function responsibility to stop for execution of the foo function. Okay, so this is what this is stack frame or this is newly created stack frame of foo function. Okay, now we have stack frame from foo function. Now whatever local variables you have in the foo function will get memory in the stack frame of foo function. So what is the local variable in the foo function? Local variable in the foo function is foo var. Okay, and what is its value? Its value is 20. Okay, so this foo var will get storage in the stack frame of foo. Now this foo is internally calling bar. So is it happening like this that foo's execution is getting completed? No, foo's execution will not complete until and unless bar's execution gets complete. So uh, again another stack frame will get added and this is stack frame for bar function. Okay, so this stack frame is stack frame of bar and whatever local variables you are creating will get memory in this stack frame but in case of bar you are not creating any local variable you are creating a static variable and this static variable will get memory where it will get memory in the data section so in case of stack frame of bar there is not any local variable okay now on stack frame not only local variables get memory, there are few more details of the function get stored. Okay, so there are few details, some metadata related to function that also get stored. But right now, I don't want to get into that discussion because it is more advanced and it is operating system related. So let's not go in that much detail. But right now, just remember whenever any function gets called, the stack frame for that function gets created on the top of existing stack frame and then the function local variable will get memory in that particular stack frame or the respective stack frame. Now the next thing, whenever your function execution gets complete, your stack frame is destroyed. Okay, this is very important. Whenever the execution of the function gets completed, the stack frame of the function gets destroyed. This is one thing. The another thing is that whatever stack frame is present at the top of your stack section that is going to be your currently executing function so in this scenario where stack frame of bar is at the top in this case we can say that right now bar function is getting executed okay now once the bars function execution gets done the bars function stack frame will get destroyed or will be removed from your stack section so in this case the bars function stack frame has got removed because its execution has got over now which is the st stack frame at the top this is the topmost stack frame so now in this case which function is getting executed now in this case foo function gets is getting executed now once the foo function execution gets over the foo function stack frame will also get removed from the stack okay so once the foo function stack frame gets or foo functions execution gets complete its stack frame will also get removed and finally which is the stack frame at the top of stack it is stack frame of main so once the main functions execution also gets over the main function stack frame will also get removed from the stack and once your stack become empty the operating system understands that the program execution has ended once your stack section becomes empty the operating system understands that your program has completely executed so in this way your functions are called or your functions gets memory 
on the stack section so let me quickly repeat we have stack section whenever your functions or whenever you have functions in your code the functions are going to get memory in the stack section each and every program will have at least one function that is main function so by default every program will have one stack frame that is main stack frame main stack frame will always create at the first and main stack frame will always end or always go at the last okay so main stack frame will always come at the first in the stack section and it will always go at the last in the stack section whenever any function is gets or whenever any function gets called each stack frame is get created at the top of the current stack frame and whatever stack frame is present at the top that function will be the currently executing function all right so in this way the program gets executed in your memory or in your computer system 